To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Today, after repeatedly downplaying the gravity of the coronavirus pandemic, President Trump declared a national emergency. The action I am taking will open up access to up to $50 billion. Part of the administration's response to combat the rapidly spreading virus, a newly formed public-private partnership with several iconic American brands with the aim of accelerating testing. We'll have the ability to do uh, in the millions uh, over a very, very quick period of time. ABC News contributor Dr. Simone Wiles is an expert in infectious diseases. Doctor, what's your biggest takeaway from the president's press conference? That we are going to get testing done, which everyone is thrilled about because we were all asking for that. So is it too late, too little, or still in time, you think? I think we're still in time. We probably would have liked it a little sooner. For weeks, a surging demand for testing presented an overwhelming challenge for health officials, with the U.S. lagging far behind other countries in total patients tested. Yesterday, the nation's top infectious specialist, Dr. Anthony Fauci, had this striking admission. Yes, it, it is a failing. I mean, let's admit it. But today, with the president's proposals, Fauci believes the equation can be changed. You have to embrace the private sector. And this is exactly what you're seeing, because you can't do it without it. Under the new partnership announced at the White House, private companies like Roche, LabCorp, and Quest Diagnostic will develop and launch the capacity to conduct COVID-19 tests. Also involved in the growing test field, the Mayo Clinic announced that they've developed what they describe as a fairly rapid test that can detect the virus that causes COVID-19. Our test uses samples collected through swabs uh, that are, are taken from the nose and mouth. And from there, our laboratory can amplify the virus itself. So we're not looking for evidence of the body's reaction to it, but rather we're trying to detect the virus itself. We talked to doctors around the country whose testing experiences have run the gamut. I have done zero tests in my office for COVID-19. We don't feel like we have enough tests. I don't think anybody feels like they have enough tests right now. We just launched yesterday, so it's a new experience for us, and um, testing is going well. Outside of New York City, in the nation's first containment zone, drive-through testing, residents braving the rain to get some answers. You do a swab in the nose called a nasopharyngeal swab and also in the mouth called an oropharyngeal swab. Then we collect that in a specimen container. We send it off to the lab and they do a special test called a PCR test and send us back the results. And how long will that take? Right now, based on what the state was doing, it was about 48 hours. On Wall Street, the president's proposals were met with approval. The market closed with the biggest one-day gain in stock market history just one day after the biggest one-day drop in history. We don't see declines of 28% in the span of one month, for the most part. This has been a historically dramatic week and a historically dramatic month for stocks. Whether we see that level of extreme volatility going forward is still up in the air. As the President and the Treasury Secretary said today, we are in inning two of this crisis. The White House announcement coming as bleak news continues from Europe, where COVID-19 has overwhelmed the continent. Europe has now become the epicenter of the pandemic, with more reported cases and deaths than the rest of the world combined, apart from China. Hardest hit, Italy. In 24 hours alone, more than 2,500 new infections, and 250 virus-related deaths reported. The total number of infections there has climbed to nearly 18,000 with 1,266 virus-related deaths. What makes this one so dangerous then? It's very contagious. Hence, we are trying to minimize contacts so that we don't get a lot of people infected at the same time. So it, it potentially is deadlier than the flu, but as contagious as the flu? It is deadlier than the flu and also more contagious than the flu. On Wednesday, the president announced the U.S. will suspend all travel from Europe, excluding the United Kingdom. Citizens, permanent residents, and our families, any of the families uh, returning from Europe will be subject to extra screening as well as self-isolation for a period of 14 days. That ban took effect at midnight, and with the jump in COVID-19 cases today,
the president hinted the U.K. could be added to the list. Well, that was recommended to me by a group of professionals, and uh, we are looking at it based on the new numbers that are coming out, and we may have to include them in the list of countries that we will, uh, you could say, ban or whatever it is during this period of time. Today, a mad scramble at European airports with American travelers rushing to get home before the ban takes effect. I was supposed to come back in June, and I came back, like, today instead. One family paying nearly $8,000 for three one-way flights from Paris to New York. I feel like they were putting a price tag on people's safety, and that's scary, especially for people who can't afford it. A lot of people were in tears. Good afternoon from the red zone which is the whole country in Italy, we are in lockdown. Jason Rupp, who travels the world making videos about his journey, is currently quarantined with his mother in Italy. Mama, say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. Rupp and his mother arrived in Sicily a day before the country went into a nationwide lockdown. It's pretty amazing. It's like we have Italy to ourselves. <laughs> Imagine having these beautiful cobblestone streets and sidewalks these statues, the amazing architecture, all to yourself, but not in a good way. Nobody's happy. You don't see smiles on the street here. Rupp says they're only making short trips for groceries. Yep. We found almond milk. Restaurants are closed. Bars are closed. There's very little traffic. That said, I still see people walking their dogs. I see people riding bicycles around. I see motorcycles delivering food. Life goes on here. I even see people sitting in the park sometimes in the daytime. However, once it becomes nighttime, everything is shut. Nothing is open at all. With limited options in Europe, Rupp says finding a ticket home is becoming increasingly difficult. I'm not sure where to go and what to do since now we can't fly back to U.S. Uh, easily. Despite the challenges, Rupp says he has no choice but to remain hopeful. We're not sick yet. We're, we're very healthy. And we're going to stay that way. We are, we're survivors. We're New Yorkers. We're going to get through this. With medical experts still pushing basic hygiene, hand washing, and social distancing as the best prevention, that didn't stop Trump from repeatedly shaking hands. And the president at first doubling down on the decision not to be tested for coronavirus. Are you planning to take any uh, kind of precautionary measure to protect you and also your staff who was there? No, with him? we have uh, no symptoms whatsoever. But after being pressed, Trump indicating he may get tested eventually. But I can tell you, it even if you don't have symptoms, well, are you being selfish by not getting tested and potentially? Well, exposing? I didn't say I wasn't going to be tested. Are you going to be? Uh, most likely, yeah. Most when likely, do you think not for that happen? reason, but because I think I will do it anyway. There are pictures and videos of the president in direct contact with someone who has tested positive for coronavirus. Now, the CDC says if you've had close contact, you should get tested. The president says he doesn't really need to because he feels fine. Another proposal from the president, waiving interest on student loans. More cancellations announced across the country. Today, 46,000 schools and 26 million students being let out of classes early. 13 states have shut doors completely. Here in Mount Vernon, New York, Deborah Stern is preparing students for a new normal, social distancing. It is very weird. But one of the things we do every morning, Mr. Scott and myself, is we stand at the door and we shake hands with everybody. And a fist bump is cool, too. Now I don't do that anymore. For students, the biggest challenge is keeping their distance from friends. In school, we can't touch anybody. Like, if we want to, like, hug or anything or high five, we can't. We have to do this. When, like, I see my best friend and I try to hug them, them but I can't because I, like, I stop myself because, you know, I don't want to catch germs. <laughs> I feel like it's very tempting because... I was trying to hug her today. Yeah. I couldn't. I went in for a hug and then you care because I realized that something serious is going on. Yet at this school, where many of the students qualify for reduced or free meals, there's more at stake. The public school becomes the, the um, really the central sort of um, 
social service agency for everything. We do a lot more than schooling, but then that gets magnified when there's an issue like this. In this of all the turmoil, there was some good news. Encouraging numbers from China indicate a possible slowdown in the spread of the virus in the original epicenter, Wuhan. The city recorded only five new cases, and Hubei province outside of Wuhan has had zero cases in eight days. Is it your expectation that it's going to get worse before it gets better? I think with more testing, I anticipate that we are going to hear about a lot more cases. And so it might get worse before it gets better. But I think we are going to be totally on top of it and working with everyone closely so that we can get a pretty good grasp of um, what's going on. You hope that or you know that? We know that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.